Belize lies on the Caribbean coast of Central America, to the south of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Prior to its independence in 1973, it was known as British Honduras. It has the lowest population density in Central America, and furthermore, thanks to government protection, around 50% of its territory is still subtropical rainforest. It's about a three or four hour drive from Belize City to Chanchich Lodge, or alternatively, you can fly. Chanchich is part of the Galanjug estate, 90% of which is a private forest reserve. The lodge is on the site of a 3,000 year old Mayan plaza. At its heart is the main reception, bar and restaurant. In the grounds, you'd be unlucky not to come across the lodge's resident oscillated turkeys. They are protected here and have become reasonably tame. Both sexes are extraordinarily colourful, with orange nodules on their featherless blue heads. The males are even brighter than the females, with a fleshy wattle and crown. They also have just visible spurs, absent in the females. The main building has an extensive veranda, overlooking the gardens and specifically a small water feature and hummingbird feeders. Occasionally a pair of ruby-throated hummingbirds could be seen here. Only the male has the dark red coloration on the throat. They are rare winter and passage migrants here, their breeding range being in eastern North America. They were sometimes joined by an immature male, just beginning to develop markings on its throat. Rufus-tailed hummingbirds were the commonest of the regular hummingbird scene. Along with striking white-necked jacobins. The white patch on the neck is not always visible when viewed from the front. This young male had started its molt into adult plumage. Females are more difficult to identify as they can be quite variable. Like this one, usually scaled below and green above, but apparently some can be very similar to dull looking males. Long billed hermits were also common, but more difficult to get good views of. Thankfully, one could sometimes be found perched in the cover of the bushes around the feeders. These same bushes also held this social flycatcher, a typical resident of Forest Edge. And a female blue-black grosbeak feeding on heliconia flowers.
grey catbirds were amongst other North American breeders on their winter territories. This one would often bathe in one of the small pools. There were also highly active magnolia warblers and quite a few wood thrushes. More usually found foraging amongst the leaf litter. Early mornings would often find this female slaty-tailed trogon in attendance. It was usually in cover, but would sometimes perch out in the open during breakfast. It was not waiting for scraps, but this seemed a good time to pick off fruit. On occasions, an immature male would put in an appearance. The green feathers of adulthood were just starting to come through on the breast and crown, along with the vermiculated pattern on the wings. Another infrequent visitor was this male gartered trogon, also called violaceous trogon, when lumped with the Amazonian trogon from South America. A different range of species, such as this yellow-throated euphonia, preferred a fruiting fig tree behind the feeding station. Only the male has the yellow throat. The female being white underneath with just a yellow chin. In the same tree were colourful golden hooded tanagers. And yellow winged tanagers endemic to Central America and one of the species that has benefited from the proliferation of secondary growth habitats. There were also cedar waxwings, winter visitors here from North America. Resident tropical kingbirds a juvenile red-capped mannequin and a yellow-bellied Elania. Best of all, a stunning male lovely Cotinga paid a visit. A rare forest species and another Central American endemic. They are apparently only occasionally seen around the lodge. Away from the veranda, the lodge gardens had a variety of other good bird habitats. The lawns attracted a foraging northern water thrush, another winter visitor. Along with one of the lodge's resident southern house wrens. A clay coloured thrush a foraging oven bird and a pair of white collared seed eaters. The females are brown with two white wing bars but it is the male that merits the name with pied plumage and a broad white collar. They also have a distinctive cinnamon tinge to the underparts. A pair of band-backed wrens were nest-building in one of the garden's larger palm trees. Spot-breasted wrens were generally fairly common, but usually heard rather than seen. Woodpeckers were regularly found in the larger trees, 
most obvious were the eye-catching pale-billed woodpeckers, with a pair presumably breeding here. Just visible black on the crown identify this showy individual as the female. The male was also tapping nearby. He has an all red head. A pair of black cheeked woodpeckers were also frequently seen. Again, head coloration separates the sexes. The male, here below, has an all red crown, whereas on the female, the area above the forehead is black. They particularly liked dead and decaying trees. On one occasion, they were accompanied by a male golden-fronted woodpecker. Bat falcons would also perch on the same dead branches, certainly often enough to suggest a territorial attachment. On one afternoon, there was a remarkable encounter with one of the local white hawks. It saw and then caught a snake in the long grass. Later returning to a perch very close to our cabin. Here in Belize, they are of the white-backed race, sometimes called Mexican white hawk. Early mornings and evenings were a good time to see crested guans roosting in the relative safety of the lodge grounds. Their name is derived from their bushy crest, but it remains flat when they're relaxed. At night, common parakis could be found resting on the paths around the cabin. Around the periphery of the ancient plaza, the grounds were bordered by thick forest, where a white-whiskered puffbird could often be found. Wintering North American flycatchers also favoured this transient environment including a least flycatcher that had a regular territory here. They breed in northerly mixed forests, whereas this yellow-bellied flycatcher will select a typically more coniferous habitat when it returns north. This great crested flycatcher will prefer more open woodland further south and avoid boreal forests. They all breed in different habitat zones but happily spend the winter months here in similar locations. By comparison, the northern tropical peewee shares the same habitats but is a resident species. Close to the lodge, a fruiting tree by the staff buildings was a good spot to find feeding Aztec parakeets. These mainlanders are often treated as conspecific with the Jamaican parakeet, whereby they get lumped together as olive-throated parakeet. A bright rumped Attila shared the same tree. along with a pair of masked tetiras. Here the male, and here the female. An ochre-bellied flycatcher, and black-headed saltators. A family group of Geoffroy's spider monkeys were attracted to the surrounding trees. 
they included a female with a youngster. Named after a French naturalist, they are also known as black-handed spider monkeys and rather more boringly, as Central American spider monkeys. Beyond the lodge, rainforest extends for miles around and could be explored directly from the lodge via various tracks and marked trails. One of these led to and along Chan Cheech Creek, after which the lodge is named. Chan Cheech means little bird in Mayan. At the start of the trail, a series of pools close to the lodge could be productive for birds early morning and late afternoon. Including on one visit, a male American pygmy kingfisher. Water thrushes were more regular a distinctive yellowish tinge to the underparts and supercilium and a rather messy breast pattern show this one to be a northern water thrush. This one was also yellowish below but the base colour to the breast was white, the supercilium whiter and stronger behind the eye and the throat unstreaked, distinguishing it as a Louisiana water thrush. The trail continues beside the creek. A good area for gartered trogon. This was another male. Plus the rather secretive northern chiffonis. And a white bellied wood wren. Along another track, the Sylvester Village Road, the habitat is more open. More oscillated turkeys foraged around the verges. It was good to see so many present, as they are becoming increasingly rare across their restricted range, mainly due to hunting pressures. Being large, relatively slow and superbly plumaged, they are particularly prized by hunters from the United States. Another regular hunter's quarry, a white-tailed deer, was also glimpsed beside the track. It was worth checking out the palm fronds along here, a favourite habitat of the western barred wood creeper. The barring is mainly on the underparts, so not easy to see, but in good light is also visible on the head and nape. The track links with other trails that lead through thicker forest. Home to a female black-headed trogon. And a male summer tanager. And also this foraging ivory-billed woodcreeper. an unfortunately obscured male chestnut-coloured woodpecker and a male smoky brown woodpecker. A male black-throated shrike tanager showed surprisingly well. Rufus-tailed jacamars are more typically seen in the open, although this individual was especially bold. Central American birds are of the race also known as black-chinned jacamars, and sometimes considered a separate species in their own right. The black chin is however restricted to the male. 
This is a female with a pale throat, typical of all the rufous-tailed types. Back along the approach road, a bridge crosses Chanchich Creek, an area favoured by another northern water thrush. And where this melodious blackbird foraged on an area of short grass. A male red capped mannequin was glimpsed in the adjacent forest. And a cinnamon beckard appeared nearby. Trips can also be arranged with a lodge's guide to areas further afield. One is to the escarpment at La Lucha. En route we found a tawny winged wood creeper. Another male red capped mannequin. Lots of white whiskered puff birds, of which this one showed best. And Rufus Pia. An open area at the escarpment provides fabulous views across a huge expanse of rainforest. The viewpoint can be excellent for seeing soaring raptors, but most this day were rather distant, including a pair of white hawks. In the surrounding trees, a bat falcon was a little more obliging. The estate's old cocoa plantation was a good early morning excursion. A variety of noisy parrots were around after dawn, but only a single Red Lord Amazon was filmable. A keel-billed toucan never deigned to come into full view. Similarly, this brown jay. and a male garter trogon typically refused to look at us. A male master tyra showed a little better. And an olive-sided flycatcher preened in the open. This is another winter visitor from North America. Finally, a male purple-crowned fairy did show well close to the main track. Laguna Seca means dry lake in English, and it does dry up during droughts. An afternoon outing there revealed this bat falcon, feeding on an unidentified small bird in the trees above the trail. Nearby, a white-necked puffbird perched obligingly in the open. Less cooperative was a briefly seen male dull-mantled antbird. This northern royal flycatcher was an excellent find along the approach road during the return to the lodge. A hint of yellow rather than red in the crest suggests it's a female, but despite such excellent views it's hard to be sure. Nearby, a keel-billed toucan typically kept itself hidden whilst feeding, and a pair of short-billed pigeons were feeding in the same area. Further along the road were a few Montezumas or Appendulas. The main administrative centre for the Gallon Jug estate is surrounded by pasture and more open woodland. There were more brown jays, 
a typical species found around disturbed forests throughout Central America, and one of those species that actually benefits from a degree of deforestation. Grey catbirds. Those that winter here return to breeding grounds in North America across the Gulf of Mexico, so feeding up beforehand is an endurance necessity. A great kiskadi. And a female yellow warbler. Swallows and martins perched on overhead wires. Most were grey-breasted martins. But this individual was more unexpected, identified after some debate as a second calendar year cave swallow, a first ever for Chan Chich and the estate. Night drives from the lodge were popular, weather permitting. Sightings could be hit and miss, but common parakis proved to be fairly reliable. Common potus were much harder to find, though this one eventually allowed itself to be spotlighted. We also managed to find a mottled owl perched on a fence post. And best of all, three separate sightings of Guatemalan screech owl. This is the species found from Mexico through to Nicaragua. Some authorities lump them together with other similar forms found further south, whereby they are usually called vermiculated screech owls. The various populations are however very detached. <laughs>